An Arkansas man has been sentenced to two life terms plus 835 years in prison for the fatal shooting of an off-duty police officer in northeast Arkansas. Uh, DeMarcus Donald Parker, 27, was convicted Tuesday, September 8th by a Crittenden County jury of first-degree murder, illegally shooting a weapon from a vehicle, and 21 related charges um, in the April 2018 shooting death of Forest City Officer Oliver Johnson, according to court documents. An attorney for Parker did not immediately return a phone call seeking comment on Wednesday. Prosecutors have said that Parker uh, was shot at rival gang members outside of Johnson's home in West Memphis when the officer was struck in the stray of bullets. Um, investigators have said Johnson was likely not the target of the gunfire. So gang member shoots at opposing gang members, uh, accidentally hits a cop, two life sentences in prison. Two okay. life sentences plus, plus 835 years. 835 years. So what you're probably looking at here, right? They had the 21 related charges. Mm-hmm. When I first heard those numbers, my, my immediate thought was, you know, there's two things that could bump that up that high. Uh, one would be there's multiple people that are, are targets. Gotcha. And then number two would be multiple shots. If there's three Mm -hmm. potential targets, he fired seven shots. That's 21 counts of, hey, he... Attempted murder. Attempted murder, maybe aggravated assault. Some charge using a firearm or... So the state will often add a lot of charges, right? They'll charge everything they can think of um, because they don't want to um, just charge the most serious because if they don't get that... And by charging something. everything else that's included, then they might get something lower. Yeah. Um, and in fact, there, there have been cases in the news where they've only charged, like, the big one, and then when they lost, um, you know, they got in a lot of trouble. When their defendant walks out, people do Right, not people like are it. not um, <laughs> happy about that. So what they'll often do is they'll do a charge of attempted murder for each potential target— Per shot fired. Wow. A good example would be if somebody is resisting arrest and there's four officers trying to arrest them, well, that's going to be four counts of wow. resisting arrest. Really? One, one per officer. That's crazy that's what normally happen. About. And And what will often happen is, is prior to a trial, they'll give you a plea deal that'll be something less. But if you take it to a trial, that's when you start looking at more of these long long sentences where they rack it all consecutive because it's it's called a trial tax right and it's nothing it's not in the law it's not anything like that it's just kind of something that you just see um because generally speaking if it's if it's a bad case more facts come out um that that might not be helpful um another thing that could impact that sentence being that long would be is if this person had a prior record i have two questions is there a potential of overstepping And then the other question is, from, like, an idealist perspective, looking at, like, what the law is supposed to do for people, do you guys agree with how that system is? You know, hey, um, or do you think that it's, like, kind of a corrupt usage of this code of laws that we've created? I've never worked as a prosecutor, so I, I can't speak from experience on this. But generally speaking, there could be a slight downside if it goes to a trial, because if I'm really stretching on the most serious charge that would give the defense attorney ammunition to say this, this is, is this is being done out of spite and out of malice this is a yeah. bogus this is a show court you know you can make a big it, deal out of the fact that like you know they've charged this person with malice murder mm-hmm. look at this there's no malice this was obviously if you have a very sympathetic accident. defendant yeah like if it's like an old lady and you've overcharged her I, th- I could see the jury getting mad at it. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those things where like if, if you really stretch and you and you can't prove it, then, then yes, there could be a bit of a downside. Mm-hmm. Um, I think practically, I think there's more of a – there is more of a benefit to a prosecutor to just file everything and just kind of see what sticks. Yeah. Um, you're, you're making more work for yourself because you then have to go through each one like – line by line is going to make a lot of stuff to go through logistics wise and that for the jury it's going to be like oh my god like what did yeah. they do but, they yeah. did and I think for juries there must be some degree I know it's civil that happens but like they look at all these charges and they're like this person might even be sympathetic right? or they might feel justified or the, vi- or the person they shot was terrible right. um, and they're sort of like let's just pick one of those lower ones and give them like five years and send them on their way yeah the, you do you do run that risk that is a good point I hadn't thought about that so say gotcha. it's like a, a murder charge but you've also included voluntary manslaughter as a lesser you know offense they might have eventually landed on on murder if they've been made to deliberate longer yeah. but they might also do that compromise and go down to voluntary manslaughter yeah, well. and, yeah, that, that and that was something that as a defense attorney you worry about too because if you're thinking well this is a terrible case there's no way they can prove this well, well you might wind up with you know where, where you're hoping for maybe even a hung jury 
mm-hmm. right? And and, a, and a hung jury would mean that they don't come to any agreement. No verdict. Gotcha. There's no verdict. You might be hoping for that because then that the prosecutor you know, might not try it. They again. might not try it again, or or they might come back to you with a much better offer mm-hmm. for a plea. So you might be hoping for that, but because they have all these lesser included offenses to choose from, they might just go ahead and convict on something lower that's still really bad for your client. Because juries are people. Right. Like, if you see a person oh, yeah. in that circumstance, you're like, oh, no. Yeah. If they're more and more like you, like, yeah. which is why there's certain biases towards, like, middle class white juror being people, defendants, part because juries tend to be more middle class white people. Um, and, and but if you you're can like identify me, you're like, with the person yeah. more. Yeah. So if, you can, if, you can, if you can somehow play that exactly right, like even the, the O.J. Simpson jury, they might have sympathized with them because of race. I think they said they did. But like if you kind of build in those kind of things and you can create that kind of vibe with the jury, they might let you go because they're human beings and they now understand what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> um, from 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 a perspective of idealism and like you know the the intent of like what the law is supposed to do. Do you guys agree that this is like yeah this is the system this is it working well or oh it's terrible. Think? The yeah. system seems like we have too many things that are illegal. We don't need to make illegal, um, which also increases the amount of contact people have with the police. Yeah. Um, and also the w- it doesn't actually look after victims at all. Like every single litigate, every single criminal case is like the state versus defendant or the people versus whatever your state is. And at no point is the victim there because they're just a witness to the state's case. And one thing other countries have experimented with, and some places in the U.S. are experimenting with, is restorative justice and actually mm-hmm. having a meeting between the victim and the defendant to make the victim whole, um, which is, there's data emerging, at, but it tends to lower recidivism rates um, because the defendant actually has to acknowledge what they've done to the person and most people feel like shit after they've acknowledged what they've done yeah. it was like stealing a bike and the def- and the person it was an example of it from like san francisco and say some dude sold one's bike the woman asked him to paint uh, make a painting of tinkerbell for her it was a very random thing she wanted to make mm-hmm. whole but he really? really threw himself into it and made her like a kick-ass painting and he <laughs> never com- and he never reoffended. and he didn't That's go to jail his life cool. was not ruined so yeah. but there, there, should, there should be more space in the justice system for things that make victims whole and actually try to lower crime. It, very few people's lives are better after being incarcerated. Right. right. Tossing them into a for-profit <laughs> prison system that doesn't focus on reform. It, focuses it doesn't on... actually make us safer. Like most crime is committed by a very small percentage of the population. That just keeps free. And we never actually address that. I think that's super interesting, the, the, the idea that instead of, you know, hey, you violated like society's laws and therefore will totally ruin your life instead of hey you violated this person's laws you guys why don't you say you're sorry for really for non-violent offenses in particular start start by saying you're sorry yeah and then let's go from there that's amazing and let the system make people better obviously you shot if you killed somebody yeah send you to the justice system Mm -hmm. what our system doesn't do well that others do um, I think you, like you said you get less recidivism when you treat people like human beings um, when you treat them as a, as a person who made a mistake or, or a person who was in a bad situation and made a bad decision right and you, you treat them as a human you help them get back to where they need to be but I think what we have we have these laws and we have enforcement that pulls people into the system at a super young age and that just sets them up to have it so much harder for the rest of their life Life. Exactly, and a big thing too is when you're in jail, when you're in prison. I mean, I most of my clients would tell me the drugs in prison were were better and cheaper than on the outside. Wow. So, and and then there's the there's the inherent risk of when you're in prison of, of being attacked. Like it's just it's not a good place. So I think what we have is we have these laws that are set up to be very punitive, and there are things where where society there there should be some punitive aspect. Oh, of course, but but we yeah. we are so focused on the punitive aspect um, that the human kind of gets lost versus the human, and yeah. I think it's because we look at it as. You know, instead of an opportunity to rehabilitate a person, um, we look at it as something that we have to, it's almost like another thing we have to just pay for to warehouse someone. And they try to do that for as little as possible. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful or at least enjoyable um, listening to us um, rip apart the great legal questions from the depths of the internet. It would help us out if you could like, share, or leave a comment below this video. Also, if you want to protect your family through the estate planning process, please give us a call. Our direct number is 404-738-9538. And you can also leave us an email at the address below.